Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today I'd like to take a look at this little gem right here, Rise of the Kage, or Kaji, or whatever, however you pronounce it. Basically, it's a two to four player game, ninjas versus samurai. Ninjas are trying to infiltrate a manor or a market and affect their mission objective, whatever it might be, while the guards are trying to stop them. It's a two to four player game. It's uh, one player will take the role of the bosses, and the guards and the other players will take the roles of the ninjas. Uh, there's a lot of dice rolling, some pretty cool looking miniatures, uh, great artwork. Does that matter? Is there a good game there? Let me show you. All of the elements that are on the board right now are things that have to be put on the board in a specific spot uh, at the beginning of the game by the person who is controlling the boss and the guards. Uh, so this particular mission is the manor house mission and we're going to be playing that. Now the scenario board shows you where all of the search code tokens can go and uh, where the ninja players infiltration points will be so you have in the green areas is where the ninjas will be coming in then in the red areas on the map is where search tokens can be placed and only one search token can be placed uh, per red zone so at the bottom of the scenario booklet you see here that it says that we have to take search tokens three sets plus the trap set so there's four sets of search tokens that are going to be placed on the board then you're going to have eight shoji doors, eight plank doors, one bell token, one lantern token. Also, you will place two barracks tokens um, wherever uh, the guard player decides to put them. And then you'll also get your starting guards, which is you get 10 models for the starting guards. And so setup would go something like this. Now, as you can see, uh, the way the guards are facing are important uh, because in an unalerted state, which is how all of the guards are at this point, uh, they only see in front of them. They cannot see behind them. And their area of influence is um, only one in an unalerted state. Generally speaking, this person without the lantern can have an area of influence right here and to the side but he cannot see these back here. First of all, the alert track is up here and the round track is right here. And they both have tokens for it. Uh, generally speaking, every time the guards get to take a turn, this will move up one. Every time one of the ninjas causes noise, this will move. So an example, during the ninja's turn, if each ninja causes one noise, then this will move three areas. The bell is the end game condition for the guards. If this track gets to the bell, or this track gets to the bell, before the ninjas have completed their objective, then the guards win. Then the boss has to choose what kind of guards he's going to use for this mission. So uh, there are three different kinds of guards that the boss can choose. He can choose yellow, amber, or red. And depending on the slot, you might have some choices to make. Now, it also tells you how many of the guards you start with. So 10, none, and none. These other guards will come into play later on. Um, once the alert level reaches the amber, we will be able to recruit Bushi guards. Once it reaches the red, we'll be able to recruit Machibugyo. The five areas here are the number of cards that the 
boss can play in a single turn. Once those slots have been filled, he won't be able to play any cards, but at the beginning of his next turn, he would be able to discard any cards in his hand and any cards that are on, on the board here, and then draw back up to his maximum limit of five. Each of these spots here are where special occurrences will happen. For example, once the alert token reaches this spot, um, Kenta can alert two guards that are already on the board. Also, down here, the action and noise tokens it gives you for each level of alertness. It gives you how many action tokens you will get. So at the beginning of the game, since the token is in the yellow area, we only get one, two, three, four, five, and six action tokens. These are the tokens that will be used to move the guards around and give them things to do. Now, setup for the ninjas is much easier than it is for the guards. Uh, all you have to do for the ninjas, first of all, is take the mission cards that are going to be used. So the two manor house mission cards and all of the rest of the generic mission cards are shuffled together. So you take the top card, the rest of the mission cards are done away with because you're not gonna use them. And then this card is shown to the rest of the ninjas. So this card says that it is a rescue and you're, you're going to need a 14. How do you reach that number of cards? Well, each turn, the, num the ninjas are going to be trying to accomplish search tokens within the board. And every time they get a search token, it's added to the ninjas search token pool. And once that search token pool reaches a certain number, which is six, they can start rolling a die in order to add the die result to the number of search tokens that are in uh, the search pool. And then if that number is reached, then the rest of the effects of this card are triggered. Now each round is conducted by the ninjas taking the first turn and then the guard player taking the second turn. And that's how every round goes. All right, so the first thing that the ninjas would do is that they would replenish any dice that they used on the previous turn. Then they would allocate their moves. In order to allocate their moves, they would take their movement tokens and plan out the path they're that they're going to take. Then reaction rolls are made. So each ninja would roll a die. For example, y Yuto over here would roll and he has a three because his um, reaction doesn't have any modifier to it. On a ninja's turn, their path is already selected and they can interrupt their movement at any point whenever they meet an obstacle or they're forced to interrupt their movement by uh, some other kind of uh, test that has to be made. All right, so first of all, um, Shizuka here would go one, two, and three, and then she is met with a door. So Shizuka here needs to make a roll, either a force roll, which means she's going to use brute force, not worrying about causing noise, or a stealth roll. Uh, trying to pick the lock. All right, so she decides that she's going to use uh, a stealth die, which means that she is trying to be quiet. So if she succeeds, this action will not cause noise. And in order to try and make sure that she uh, does that, she's going to augment that roll with one of her force dice. If it were a shoji door, like this one right here, she would only need to get a four. But since it's a plank door, she's going to need to get a five or better. And you, All right, so we have a four plus one is a five. Then she also would take her, her stealth ability of plus two, and that would actually be a seven. So the door is completely done and removed from play. She can continue her movement one, two, and three. And so she's there. She infiltrated the manor successfully. Now, Yuto over here, um, has a little bit more of a sticky situation going in. Not only does he have to try to get past a plank door, but he also has a guard in his room and he's going to have to try to try to be sneaky around that. First of all, move his three, one, two, three, and get those out of there. He's going to use a stealth die, which means he's trying to be quiet. If he succeeds, it will not cause any noise. So he's trying to get a five, but he does not have any modifiers to this. So he has to get five as a result of the two dice. Ooh, wow. He must have had his Wheaties for breakfast. Now, he moves into the area of influence with the guard. He must make a stealth check. So he's definitely gonna wanna roll the black die because he is trying to be quiet. 
and he is rolling against the awareness of the guard. Their alertness is the eyeball, and then they're in an unalerted state, so the black row is necessary, and it shows a two. Um, Yuto wants to be safe, so he's going to augment his roll with a white die, guaranteeing a success. This guard does not detect him, and since there is not another guard here, he only has to make the one check. So he can move freely the last two spaces. And he is still undetected. And that guard is none the wiser. Over here, Katsumi, he is trying to go the quicker, more efficient route and uh, see if he can go draw some blood from this uh, samurai guard over there. So he's simply just going to move one, two, three, four, five, six. And since he is not within the area of influence of that guard there, he doesn't have to make a roll. Since no noise was generated by the ninjas this turn, they did their job very well, this doesn't actually move. Then we would advance the turn marker. Then the guard player would take the number of action tokens denoted by the alert level. So here, in this case, we would take six action tokens. These guards can only have two action tokens given to them. But had the ninjas generated any noise, noise tokens would also be added to the action token pool and the guards could get extra actions by the use of noise tokens. We're going to give one action to this guy right here so that he can move. Now movement for the guards is two. Now the guard is trying to detect uh, Katsumi over there and he's going to take a number of dice equal to his awareness. His awareness is the eyeball and in an unalerted state it's a two. So he takes two dice and he's going to try to get six or higher with these dice. So he rolls and he gets an eight. So that means that he is now alerted. So we put that on his base and we also take Katsumi's detected token and add it to his base. If we had any noise tokens that the ninjas had generated, I could use one of the noise tokens to allow him to attack the ninja. I'm gonna take two more action tokens and give them to this guy up here so that he can move uh, four times. So one, two, three, four. This guard up here, give him two actions and have him move four as well. One, two, three, four and we'll have him face this direction. All right, so Shizuka here, she's going to move one, two, three. She got lucky, the guard actually left her room, so she doesn't have to make any stealth moves here, but she does want to search for this item. So she's going to want to remain quiet. She wants to get a number equal to or higher than a five. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that she gets the number she's looking for. So she rolls a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So she definitely gets it. She flips over. It is not a trap. So this goes into the pool. And Katsumi here is in a bit of a pickle because he's got an alerted guard right next to him. He has been detected, so he must fight. So he's going to use his stealth die because he is trying not to make any noise, but he's going to add to it a white die, a combat die. Now he's using his combat ability, which is plus one in a detected state. So he's adding one to his roll and he's trying to get higher than the armor of the Tasaki guard, which is three. So he's just wanting to try to make sure he rolls. And that is a one, two, uh, it's three plus one. So he actually does get that. So the guard is taken away and he is able to move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it is Yuto's turn and he is also in a sticky situation because he wants to search this location here, but he can't do so as long as he is in the area of influence of another guard. So he's going to have to take care of the guard as well. He's going to use one die and one combat die to do so. Again, trying to get a three or, uh, I'm sorry, this guard is alerted, unalerted, so it's only a two. So a two or higher here, 
Okay, so we got five, six, so no worries, got that taken care of. Now he's going to use his other two dice to try to get that one as well. And that's a five, so he's able to do that. And another token is added to the board. The game would continue in this fashion until, like we said earlier, either the ninja's mission is, is completed and they win, or alert track reaches the bell, or the round track reaches the bell. And in which, in those two cases, the guard players would win. Because while there is a level of um, god mode in this where you can see where all those ninjas are, you can uh, see where all the guards are as the ninja player, and you can things that you wouldn't normally know, you know in this game. But there are ways to go around that. I like that, that the guards can't just walk into a room and boom, see you. They have to detect where you are because the ninjas are going to be in the shadows and making sure that they're not being seen and they're masters at doing that kind of thing. I like how the uh, guard is able to, or the guard player rather, is able to set up the board however he wishes with a few uh, tile placement or token placement rules, uh, but he largely is able to choose what he wants to do. The artwork was great. Really enjoyed the artwork. Uh, the ninja artwork was was thematic and different for each one, each of the different houses that were there. Uh, the artwork on the guard cards were were is very well done. The board is super. I love these kinds of boards because you, you can actually look at it and there's things going on uh, in those areas that you wouldn't normally use. Um, there's just a lot of detail on the board that doesn't have to be there. It's just a little layer of love, so to speak, on a, an already neat looking board. I like being able to, as the ninja player, program your movement and then whenever you reach something that you want to stop and do, you simply stop and do it. The only restriction is the number of dice and the kind of dice that you have. The different cards that are used, the guard cards and the ninja cards, are ways that you can kind of break the rules and from, from situation to situation, which is cool because it, it takes it away from that static, um, uh, I'm just kind of a machine following a certain course and all this other kind of stuff. As the guards, the guard cards um, give you a lot of flexibility. Um, some of the cards you won't have when you need them, and then sometimes you'll have cards that you can't use. But uh, I think in most situations, something in your hand is going to be useful during your turn. And the fact that you can discard your entire hand and any cards that you've played and draw back up to your, your hand limit of five, that it's, it's a simple thing you can do at the beginning of every turn. If you're not finding the cards that you need, they're really simple to get rid of them and get new ones up. I will have to say though that the rule book was a little rough. For example, the guard, uh, the guard barracks tokens. The fact that you get two of these at, during setup isn't mentioned in the setup. It's mentioned where guard, where the barracks tokens are talked about. Unintuitive. So it's stuff like that. So all in all, I'm giving Rise of the Kage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this, for a ninja samurai game, I'm going to give it two thumbs up. Uh, for a just a general uh, gameplay rating, I'm probably going to give it around a 6.5 to a 7. I'll, I'll go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10 because this is a game that I really do enjoy playing. Um, and I'll probably enjoy it uh, whenever somebody else wants to play it as well. So that's Rise of the Kage. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.